Joey Krebs, a.k.a. the Phantom Street Artist, explores the commodification of art, the appropriation of corporate media, post-colonialism, and social resistance. Hi, Joey. Thanks for joining us today. Let's start with um, Blacklisted and Banned, and the show is a response uh, to the MOCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles, did a show uh, called Art in the Streets. Well, my initiative essentially is very, very simple. It's it, the best way to see it is uh, is uh, that it's uh, a theater of intervention with a question. It's addressing, it's critiquing, it's questioning our culture in question, and that's the essential principle behind my performance, my expression, my my work, and my identity. It's the essence of my being is to provide inquiry and establish inquiry, which is lost in our day and age. Um, so the the MOCA show, uh, which is curated by Jeffrey Deitch, and there's a lot of controversy about someone like that moving into the nonprofit museum world, someone who comes from, um, uh, you know, the private sector and art dealing and such. And so he goes in and he wants to do, take a, a counterculture movement and show the world graffiti art. But the way that he is giving it a narrative, um, you think, is is not true to it is somehow a betrayal. I think that what is taking place is, is and it's not uncommon, uh, is it's the appropriation of radical chic as, uh, as, uh, as a value and, and totally uh, removing any kind of, a, it's, of its marginality, anything that's provocative, anything that's compelling, anything that is challenging. It's trying to make it palatable for our particular culture, which is the merging, the privatization of corporate with the arts, of culture with arts, and, uh, and the corporatization of, of commodity, of art. And this particular issue is, is what I, I address. What is it in Blacklisted and Banned that you feel um, people can really learn about the you know, authenticity in the movement? Well, the issue with Blacklisted and Banned is it's, it employs a critical and ironic language that stakes new claim. Um, that challenges uh, through sarcasm and satire, humor, parody. Uh, we have a, a particular culture of our time that is not educated, that is not w- aware of anything uh, uh, in, in, in a historical context. And, and that's what the issue here is, is, is what we're addressing. We have a very, very uh, persuasive argument that's being presented with no historical context. Uh, that's an issue. That's an issue that needs to be raised. More than ever, ours is a time that needs a sense of history. S- history is being silenced. History is being denied. Um, and uh, you could see that through the work of Shepard Ferry that has this uh, revolutionary political um, chic that is essentially just empty, impotent. It is, what are some examples of the way that he has uh, taken things out of context? Some of the work that Shepard Ferry has appropriated, ripped off, improperly sourced, improperly referenced is Rene Madero's, the Black Panthers. Uh, Mark Valens actually, uh, uh, actually detailed a, a historical timeline of all the works that he referenced, and they were complete ripoffs. And he only served to uh, advance his own gratuitous interests. Yeah, for those of you listening, we're talking with Joey Krebs, um, a.k.a. the Phantom Street Artist, and he uh, has challenged Shepard Ferry to uh, fight him in a cage. Um, Ferry it re- got a lot of fame uh, for the Obama poster, which actually is uh, made from someone else's photograph. Is that right? It's appropriated from the AP photographer, the Associated Press, Manny Garcia. Uh, and as a result, uh, Shepard's lawyer resigned from the case because of the fact that there was all these improper things that were taking place uh, during the court case and Shepard lost of a, a judicial branch that says what Shepard Ferry is doing wrong. But our particular culture has no educational value in understanding those values, which is the proper y- a fair use value and defining what fair use is. Fair use is always, and it's an important thing to discuss, is, but fair use is about where a particular uh, group of, of, of individuals from a minority actually are able to express irony and satire. And when you, you do that as a homage, but what Shepard did was he printed multiples. Right, he used it as a platform for him, himself. And, and distributed 
to the point that he exhausted those particular values of those works in culture. So you're sort of saying uh, that these, these works of art are art as social resistance, not to be used as a type of branding. Absolutely. And the fact that these particular prints that he actually distributes are exhausting the original value of the author's work as a commodity and not properly referencing, not properly authoring, not properly sourcing. You know, it's basically denying the historical value of these works. Uh, Joey, tell us what is art. Yeah, I definitely would. My particular, again, is the nature of inquiry is to not necessarily define what art is, but as much as address the question of what art is. And it, it begins as a point of departure by initiating that discord. So what is art? Art is this, art is that, art is denying this. And that's where I begin my point of departure. It seems like, like in Blacklist and in Band, uh, looking at the pieces and the way that you use uh, symbols, um, you know, there is even uh, the Nazi symbol in the work. There is uh, the cityscape. There is your famous silhouette figure. There's ways that you're, seems like you're constructing to disrupt narrative, to kind of uh, sort of stop someone from making a, a cute little story out of a radical art movement. Um, it, is it that you feel that Deitched and Mocha are creating a, a narrative um, a, around street art? That a contrived narrative. Mm-hmm. A narrative, uh, especially with the fact that uh, the, the whole indoctrination of modern media is to be convincing, to propagate, to influence, to persuade uh, the individual's minds. And, and it's a very successful show. But I, I begin to question that particularly contrived na- narrative by addressing it. And that's what my institutional critique is all about. Um, and I'm reifying that whole theater, uh, if you may, and, and turning it into my particular authoring of its event as, as a performance, uh, through performance and critique, which is right. what the Phantom Street Artist is all about. And um, and it's interesting because you, uh, as the Phantom Street artist, uh, and you have different names you operate under, you're kind of working with this idea of anonymity, which is the opposite of this idea of authoring. Well, not necessarily. The, uh, the importance is the anonymity addresses to call it into question. The anonymity is an important valued uh, role play, which I've been doing for 20 years. Um, I've done that since the late 80s when I saw the value of un- being anonymous is very, very important, being able to critique our particular culture in question. It was people like Banksy at a later date that appropriated that form and appropriated that role without properly questioning or giving uh, reference to these important artists before